we're going to show how to make a sourdough bread like this one. You'll need all-purpose white flour, whole wheat flour, water, some salt, and a sourdough starter. You'll also need a scale, a mixing tub, two benettons or big bowls, and a cast iron Dutch oven. This recipe has four stages which total 32 to 35 hours. The pre-ferment, seven to nine hours, bulk fermentation, 12 to 15 hours, proofing the shaped loaves, eight hours, and baking, three hours. Let's begin. So we're gonna make a pre-ferment uh, before we make the main dough. We're gonna use 200 grams of uh, white all-purpose flour, 50 grams of whole wheat flour, uh, 200 grams of body temperature water, that's the same as the white flour, and about 50 grams of the sourdough starter itself out of the fridge. You need 50 grams of uh, starter. Um, so you want uh, 200 grams of all-purpose. And again, this is pretty rough because we're just making like a starter um, to get the yeast going. And then you want warm water. Uh, it's about body temperature, maybe a little warmer. Not too hot or you'll kill the, you'll kill the yeast. 200, pour it in there. And then 50 of uh, whole wheat flour. I don't know if this is true of all yeast, but my yeast really likes whole wheat flour. So it, it is especially uh, productive if you feed it whole wheat. Okay, and then you just incorporate this and it'll form a shaggy dough. So see, it actually looks almost dry, like it'll form a, like a dough ball, but it's actually not going to do that. Just make sure that the yeast that you put in originally is pretty mixed in. That's it, cover it and leave it for seven or eight hours. So we have the starter, which we left uh, for at least seven to eight hours. Um, you can actually leave it, leave it much longer than that. We left it overnight. And what you can see here is these little holes, and these holes are the top of a bubble that's burst. And you can also see some of the bubbles uh, through the side. Uh, it should smell pretty good. Um, but actually, before we get that out, we want to do this thing called autolyzing. And autolyzing happens when you uh, mix water and wheat and it gets sort of hydrated. So I'm gonna put all of this in. We want a total of 804 grams. And then um, to that, we're gonna add 76 grams of either whole wheat or rye flour. So then you're, you end up with 880 grams of uh, total flour. I'm gonna start pouring the water for the autolyzing. This is again body temperature or a bit warmer. Um, 684 grams of water. You want uh, body temperature water or, or a little warmer than that because um, there's just a few things which control how fast dough rises, how well the yeast do. One of them is temperature, one of them is time, uh, one of them is salt, because uh, salt will, will, uh, will retard the yeast. So you really want this to be a warm dough because it's you want it's basically an incubator for this yeast. So I'm just using like a few fingers to kind of incorporate this. And what I was saying about autolyzing, which is hydrating the flour, is that we actually want to make this sort of uh, pretty rough, shaggy dough here. It just gives a chance, uh, gives the the dough a chance to get really, really wet. So this is another trick. It's like notice that I'm just using my hands for everything. If you have a lot of water on hand, you can um, you can get that dough off your fingers pretty easily. But all right, cover it up. 10 to 15 minutes. Um, okay, so the bread or the dough has autolyzed, so it's it's um, kind of got really wet. We're gonna add the last two ingredients, the starter. And um, I added a little water in the bottom of the bowl, which throws off the weight a tiny bit, but it makes it much easier to get the, the starter out when you're done. You're gonna um, try for 250 grams. Adding a little more just can speed up the process a tiny bit. 
and adding a little less, you know. So it, it, this is the one step that doesn't matter as much. I think partially because you're adding equal parts, roughly, of flour and water. So it doesn't throw the ratio very much. Um, the rest of this over here, uh, the starter, uh, I usually add a little water to it and then um, mix it up later and add it back to the, to the starter that's in the fridge. Mm -hmm. The last ingredient here is uh, salt. On here, you want 22 grams. This is sea salt. So here we go. And then I'm gonna get my hand totally wet. This is where really um, it, it, it gets better as you do this more. For some reason, you, you learn to kind of like not let the stuff stick to you too much. But I think one of the keys is just keeping your hand really wet. So what I'm gonna do is just try to incorporate this roughly. Um, so then there's this thing called the pincer motion, which is where you go like that. And it's a really good way to just combine all the ingredients really thoroughly. And what you do is you do it and then you rotate and you do it the other direction. And you can start to actually fold it, which is where you grab, grab it and kind of roll it over the top like that. Give maybe one more pincer. So I think this is probably pretty good at this point. See it's sitting in a kind of a lump and it's pretty ragged, you know, so it's not, it's not like a smooth, nice, springy dough. But we're just gonna leave it, because once you've gotten it wound up into a ball like this, you need to let it relax a bit before you can work it again. So what we're gonna do now is we start the clock for 12 to 15 hours. We're gonna fold it maybe three or four times at the max, mm. and we're gonna do it less and less often. Maybe the first time we could wait 45 minutes or an hour, the second time we wait you know, an hour and a half, um, and then that would be three times, counting this one. After, say, three, four hours, then you wanna just leave it and not touch it anymore. And it will become a liquid again, more or less. It'll sort of spread out. Keep this in a warm place. Make sure it doesn't like sit by the window and get really cold. Um, and that will, that will dramatically affect your overall rise time. Okay, we've left it and it's pretty flat here, you can take a look, but it's quite warm. We put it in a room that's 71 degrees-ish, maybe a little more. And what I'm doing is going around with a wet hand, scraping it off the bottom, stretching it, and letting it drop over. So again, grab it, stretch it, drop it. And I'm just folding it. The whole thing is just getting folded over itself repeatedly. And you can already see it's really developed a strong structure to it and elasticity. And when I push down on it like that, you can feel it spring back. And I, I'm pretty much done now. I can just, you know, let it sit. But you really want to stretch it out a bit, like, because uh, that's what's going to give the bread its, its uh, structure and its height when it goes in the oven. Yeah, so sit it like that. It doesn't really matter. And then cover it up and let it rise more. I'll probably, at this rate, it's doing very well, so I'll probably only uh, do this one more time. So we've been letting this rise for about, uh, I don't know, probably 10 hours now. And we, we made it very warm, like uh, almost uh, 75 degrees on average. And so it's, it's risen quite a bit in that time, much faster than it normally would, um, in, uh, especially in the winter. You can see it's really big. You get a puff of this uh, strong smell that is growing and it's sort of very jiggly. It's full of air. You can see some air pockets here. You can look on the side as well to see a few. Um, so what I'm gonna do is put it out on this table. Um, I'm gonna try to contain it to this zone, but this is a pretty messy stage here. And then we're gonna put it in this banneton. Uh, Bannetons are uh, like a, just a basket um, that allow bread to sort of breathe uh, while in the final stage of rising, which is called uh, proofing. So to get this out cleanly, I'm gonna pour a bit of flour over it and just 
kind of as well as I can with my hand, scrape it out of there. But it's not a really uh, clean procedure, unfortunately. I think you can use a scraper if you have one. Um, but get it, try to get it out without it sticking to too much. And here we go. I've put a lot of flour right across the middle of this, and I'm just going to very gently cut it apart. Um, there's enough flour on the table that I'm just really gently doing this, and I don't think I'm going to score the table much. So you got that. Separate them a bit. And then um, a little flour in there. These we can kind of start to fold over a bit. And uh, what you can kind of get is the edges to, um, to fold under. Kind of tuck that in, and then there's this big seam, and then we put it down. Um, really, what we want to have is this in there as, as, with as little disturbance as possible, because what's going to happen is the bubbles will pop. We really kind of want the bubbles. So I'm going to lay plenty of this extra flour in here. You can actually use seeds. If you want to have a seeded loaf, you can put sesame seeds or poppy seeds in here. So all right, lifting this up and just getting this in here with the seam really at the bottom. And then I usually take a lot of the excess and just sprinkle it all over the top. Then what I can do is actually take the lid and, and cover it. I mean, it doesn't need to be sealed because the idea is it's ventilating. And I actually don't have a second banneton. And so for the second loaf, what I usually do is I, um, I, I kind of lightly oil the inside of a bowl. And the oil is just there to, uh, well, it's to help release, but it's, it's actually mainly to get the flour to stick. And you could use like the bottom of a pot if you really wanted to. It's not as ideal because it won't um, allow as much airflow, but it'll be all right. All right, so I'm doing the same thing with this loaf. And this is where you really get to see if you've done a good job developing the gluten. Um, see how this is sort of staying as a ball? It's not quite as tight as I would like, but it's all right. So there we go. You can take like a, a cloth and lay it over, or I'll sometimes take a plastic bag. Now this can all go in the fridge for between four and eight hours. I'm gonna throw these in the fridge and then bake them in the morning. So we waited about uh, 12 hours even, maybe uh, something like that, because in the fridge you can wait quite a while and it, it, it won't be a problem. So take a look. Here's the loaf. Um, we're gonna flip it and put it in the cast iron. It's gotta be in there probably 15 minutes to, to heat up. I put it a little over 400. It's super hot, so this is where I usually burn myself. Uh, at least once per loaf. I'm gonna add uh, some rice flour, which I've heard is pretty good for this, so... Um, but you can just put whole wheat flour, uh, uh, all-purpose or whole wheat, whatever you want. And if you have some coarse cornmeal, that's the best. It's looking pretty good. Be real careful here. And now, not forgetting that everything is incredibly hot, Putting that back in. Okay, so now we wait uh, 25 minutes. Yeah. Pull this out a little bit carefully. And we get our first look at the bread. It's doing pretty well, it's uh, opened up. Ooh. And um, I'm gonna put it back in. But uh, we have good height here and you can see the rip is quite nice. So I think we're doing pretty well. And now another 30 minutes. So we uh, have waited the second uh, 30 minutes with the lid off, and we're now ready to get this out. Oh, it looks great. It's tempting to take it out when it's golden colored, but you really want this crust to be slightly toasting. And I like to do this, if I can, without disturbing the, the nice ring. You want to put it on something that's a little porous, like I'm using this colander or this sort of steaming rack. That way, uh, heat doesn't get trapped on the underside. Um, a wire rack is best, but this is fine. And uh, don't cut it open for at least, I'd say, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, because it's still baking inside.
And if you do that, it'll be sog it'll be sort of soggy or, or wet. So here it is. We've let it cool down for many hours, actually. I'm going to cut it open, um, and we'll take a look at the inside. The uh, things to look out for, um, there's a few different things. Uh, and this is, some of it is about preference, and some of it is about, like, your, you know, your particular bread that you get to know. This is pretty good, and you can see some big holes in there. I like to have holes big enough you can like hide a mouse in there or something. But yeah, I'm gonna just cut this up and we can enjoy it. Very good. <laughs>